Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Several people passed this story along to me, including David and I believe Josh. And it's out of Louisiana. And this one's crazy. But we've talked before about immunity. And that is how people in certain government positions cannot be sued for doing their jobs. And sometimes they take that to extreme lengths to excuse something they've done that's just insane. This might be the most crazy use of immunity as a defense. Louisiana prosecutors say they cannot be sued over fake subpoenas that they used to pressure witnesses into testifying. So Zuri Davis wrote the article. It was on Reason.com, but I've seen this story elsewhere. And basically, the prosecutor's office was issuing fake subpoenas and serving them on people and pretending they were real to absurd lengths. In several cases, victims received higher bonds than criminal defendants and were forced to serve jail time. Again, these are subpoenas they'd serve on a witness. Not a real subpoena, but a fake subpoena, but on a real witness. So if the real witness refused to abide by the fake subpoena, they'd often get dragged in for allegedly contempt of court or something. I, I don't know what you call it when you ignore a fake subpoena. And they were often jailed. And the ironic thing you're pointing out here is they would sometimes jail the witness on the fake subpoena while the person they would testify against, if they testified, got less jail time than the witness did for the fake subpoena. Insanity. Orleans Parish District Attorney Leon Canazzaro issued fake subpoenas to pressure victims and witnesses to testify. He's now facing a lawsuit, and the Louisiana prosecutor is arguing that the practice falls under the umbrella of absolute immunity. The doctrine that says prosecutors cannot face civil actions for carrying out their official duties. And he's saying it's part of his official duty to serve fake subpoenas and to have people arrested for fake subpoenas. The uh, lens uncovered the story in April of 2017, uh, and the district attorney would send people notifications telling them to appear in court or face fines or jail time. The documents were not authorized by a judge, nor were they issued by a county clerk. And those are how subpoenas are issued in Louisiana. And every state's going to have slightly different rules on this, but generally speaking, if you've ever seen a subpoena, a subpoena has a bunch of information on it, and it'll have, you know, the court information at the top in the name of a case, and if it's addressed to you as a person who's the subject of the subpoena, it'll say, you know, you with your name and address on it maybe or something, and then it'll be signed by somebody who's authorized to sign subpoenas. And in these cases, it should have been authorized by a judge or a county clerk. So the subpoenas were unlawful, but he knew it. He was issuing fake subpoenas. And when people wouldn't respond to them, he'd ask for these people to get jailed, and many of them were. In October of 2017, the American Civil Liberties Union sued Canazzaro and some of his staffers on behalf of the people who received the subpoenas. According to the suit, the DA's office sought high bond for those jailed for refusing to obey the orders, often higher than the bond set for the criminal defendants in the related cases. So here's an example. There was a domestic violence case, and the victim was served with a subpoena to testify against the alleged violent abuser. And the victim refused to respond to the fake subpoena. So she spent five days in jail on a $100,000 bond, was dragged into court in an orange jumpsuit and shackled. Meanwhile, the person she was accusing of abusing her paid a $3,500 secured bond and returned home until his court date. And then he appeared before the court in his own clothing. Okay, so again, the witness who's choosing not to testify was not served with an actual subpoena. She'd been served with a fake subpoena. A rape victim spent 12 days in jail in response to not honoring a fake subpoena. A child sex trafficking victim spent 89 days in jail, including Christmas and New Year's Day. And again, not for disobeying a subpoena, but for not responding to a fake subpoena. This week, the DA's lawyers asked the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals to throw out the suit, arguing that absolute immunity protects them from legal action. A ruling has not been issued yet, but the judges repeatedly expressed doubts on the record about this argument, noting that the prosecutors operated outside of the realm of their authority. So 
you know, they're actually saying, look, we're allowed to issue subpoenas. So the fact that we issue fake ones is part of our job. And I would wager that 99% of the people on the street you stop somebody who's never heard the story before, describe it to them, goes, is this right or wrong? It's wrong. It's crazy. About 40 former prosecutors and attorneys general have joined several civil liberties groups, such as the Cato Institute, in a 2019 friend of the court brief arguing that there is no justification for granting absolute immunity for what is, in essence, a fraudulent practice. You know, so here's a quote. When prosecutors fail to conduct themselves ethically in their interactions with victims and witnesses, it undermines confidence in the criminal justice system as a whole, makes victims less likely to report crime, and discourages witnesses from coming forth to provide evidence. And... <clears throat> There's a couple of questions I would have that are not answered by this article, and I couldn't find the answers anywhere, is why didn't the guy issue real subpoenas? Because if somebody's actually a witness in a case, you'd serve them with a real subpoena. So there's two possibilities that spring to mind here. One is that for whatever reason, there was some weakness in the case or some weakness, some, some problem, and didn't want to go through the proper channels of doing it, or two... That the guy's lazy. You know, it's kind of difficult to fill out the paperwork properly and then have somebody take it to court and have somebody explain it and then get a judge or a clerk to sign it. And so it's just easier just to fake the paperwork sometimes. I've, I've, I've heard of cases before where someone faked paperwork, which if it had been done properly, would have gotten through. And it was just laziness. I don't know if that's the case. Um, I can tell you, though, for instance, that, and I've talked before with Timothy Masters, who's the guy in Colorado who spent 10 years in prison for a murder he did not commit, later got out of prison, and, and this prosecution, um, the people who prosecuted him became very clear, done all kinds of bad things. Uh, but the, uh, the city and the county actually apologized to him, actually apologized, said, we're sorry, we shouldn't have done this to you. And, you know, um, and I've, I've spoken to Tim before, I wrote a book about his story. And I've seen, I've seen the arrest warrant. I've, I've seen the warrant they got for his arrest. And attached to it, they had an affidavit filled out by a detective saying, here's why we think he should be arrested. And the stuff they list in there, besides being just crazy, but it's detailed. But it, I'm, I'm, even though the arrest warrant that was issued for him, I think shouldn't have been granted, the point is it was supported by this huge affidavit with all these explanations as to why they thought, you know, and so maybe it's just that the DA gets lazy and goes, look, I could fill this out, but who's got that kind of time? Besides, I know the judge is going to sign it anyways, so I'll just make one up and take it over there. But it doesn't excuse it. But I'm, I'm simply saying, because I don't, people always ask me, they always say, Steve, why do you think this happened? I don't know. This is weird. This one's weird. Because generally speaking, I can tell you that with some of the cases that were described there, domestic abuse and um, uh, child trafficking, there are going to be cases where a witness is not going to want to testify. And I know that there are some departments that have policies on this. And they'll actually say, if we get a report of, like say, domestic violence, a woman says that her husband beat her. If they're still living in the same house and the woman says, I've changed my mind, I don't want to testify. There are some jurisdictions that say, we'll honor that. We'll actually say, fine, we won't make you testify. But there are other jurisdictions where they go, if we let the witnesses choose, then they might be succumbing to pressure. And that would simply encourage the violent party to threaten the witness to not testify. And so as a thing about human nature, we've got to make these people testify. I mean, I don't know. And so it might simply be that there's a policy on this and they were issuing the subpoenas outside the policy, meaning that somebody was going to say, hey, if that woman doesn't want to testify, you can't make her. You shouldn't make her. And so instead of getting that lecture, they just said, ah, screw it. We'll just make up our own and serve it on her. See what happens. <laughs> Crazy. So again, what's happening here is the Louisiana Orleans Parish District Attorney was caught issuing fake subpoenas. And after the fake subpoenas were served on people, getting those people jailed for not abiding by the fake subpoena. And now that he's been caught doing that and is being sued for doing that, he's saying, you can't sue me. Even though I did it and it was wrong, I can't be sued because I've got immunity because the district attorney can do anything he wants in his job and get away with it. And most people are going to say, that's not what immunity does. 
But I wouldn't be surprised if this actually makes it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. Because there are going to be people out there going to say, well, you know, if you can sue them for this, you can sue them for something else. But I think this is an egregious case of prosecutorial misconduct. <laughs> Early in the morning, my friends. <laughs> there you go. David and Josh, thanks for sending the story. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. A train station is where a train stops. On my desk, I have a workstation where my work